Hello again, this is Mike with Toy Train Tips and Tricks. And this is a Lionel number 3464 operating box car. And it was cataloged from 1949 to 1952. And this is a Lionel number 3464 operating box car. And it was cataloged from 1949 to 1952. Wait a minute, it's the same catalog number. Two different colors, two different road names. <laughs> yes, you're right. So, uh, in the early post-war period, Lionel had a little trouble deciding how they were finally going to make their uh, their catalog number system work. Uh, and uh, so this series of cars is one example of that. Um, both of these having exactly the same catalog number, even though they're different road names, different colors. Uh, other than that, they were exactly the same. Um and then to add to the confusion, in 1952, another car in this series came out, the Western Pacific. Uh, and that car, despite having exactly the same tooling, just being different color and different road name, received a totally different catalog number, number 3472. But then the following year, in 1953, when Lionel came out with their longer cars, longer box cars, the 6464 series, and that series lasted all the way through the end of the post-war period. Even though they came in lots of different road names, this case, they all were numbered 6464, but they had a suffix number showing the different road names, such as 6464-500 or 6464-250 or whatever. Uh, so it took them a while to figure out uh, the differences. Another example, uh, when Lionel came out with their F3s, uh, first came out with their F3s in 1948, ironically in Santa Fe and New York Central, they shared the same number, 2333. It wasn't until later that they started uh, changing the catalog numbers for different road names. Also, a lot of people get confused when they try to find these in the catalogs or into uh, in price guides because they see this number, uh, the I-59,000 or the, you know, that looks like an I instead of a 1, 59,000 or the 63132, when actually um, these are unusual and that the catalog number is actually over here, the 3464 and the 3464. Usually, post-war Lionel cars, uh, and even most MPC cars, the road number would be the catalog number. In this case, it's not. The catalog number is over here with the uh, uh, the car data and a separate road number. So, uh, you know, so don't be confused by these numbers if you're looking them up in the price guide. These are, in fact, number 3464. Uh, as far as determining uh, a data manufacturer, again, these were made from 1949 to 1952. There are some variations. Uh, so here on the Santa Fe car, we see uh, steps on the corners, which would indicate um, 1949 production. Also, that we have staple end trucks, that you have the little staple pieces coming off there instead of a solid bar. That also indicates 1949 production. Uh, the earliest 1949 uh, Santa Fe's would have brown metal doors. This one has black doors, but uh, this is not an original car. One is metal, and the other is a replacement plastic door. So uh, this one is certainly not original. Uh, I'm guessing that the original metal was replaced by plastic, making this a 1949 door, uh, 1949 car. Uh, 1950 and later had the bar end trucks and the steps were gone on the Santa Fe cars. For the NYC, uh, for some reason, they used a different frame that uh, generally did not have steps until the very end of 1952 production did have steps as they were using up old 1949 inventory. Why they didn't use it in 49, I don't know. Um, but uh, so this was probably early uh, 1949 production as well because again, we have these staple end trucks as opposed to the bar end trucks. So this is probably also a 1949 car as well. Metal doors, um, black metal doors, um, sometimes unpainted. These, like these are, some of them are painted black. Uh, this is just, you know, the oxide black, but again, that indicates that this is a, an early car, probably 1949 production. But in any case, so we have these two operating box cars, 
uh, were in the catalog. They came in sets, and they also were available for separate sale for a whopping $5. Now, think about this. In 1949, $5 was a lot of money, comparable to 50 or 60 today, somewhere in that ballpark. So what's so special about the operating boxcar? What does it do? Well, this is also when Lionel started switching their automatic couplers, their uncouplers, from the sliding shoe type with the five rail uh, OCS um, uncoupling track to the UCS that had the rails and a magnet. And using a magnet underneath this plate to pull down the pin and uncouple the cars rather than having a solenoid in each coupler. It was a lot cheaper, a lot easier. And they realized that in addition to having that magnet do things like uncouple, they could also use it for operating cars. So in this case, you have this little plunger, and when you pull the plunger down, the operating boxcar, you get, I'm sorry, try one more time. There it is. And you get the man popping out of the car. Um, this is a reproduction man. The originals for these look like this. Three, two, one. Yeah, solid blue. Um, so, not a whole lot of action there, but for 1949, um, pretty, pretty interesting. Um, and it was a pretty simple mechanism. So, the Santa Fe car back here, the uh, NYC here is in my son's collection. He bought it at a show last year. Um, this one actually came from a junk box. Um, I was looking to buy some trucks to, uh, to ride underneath some of my 3D printed uh, rolling stock um, because I'm still not happy with my, uh, my 3D truck design. It doesn't roll super well. Uh, so I was looking for some cheap replacement trucks to put under some of those cars. So I bought this box uh, and, you know, cars, uh, I think there were six cars all together. And in the pictures, they all looked to be in really bad shape. And it said in the description for junk, for repair. Well, I get the, I, I win the auction, I get the, the box home. And um, actually, most of the cars, all they needed was some basic cleaning and they were in really good shape. So I'm still looking for replacement trucks. This is really the only car that needed any work at all. The man was missing, so I ordered a replacement uh, reproduction man. And uh, this truck was bent, so I had to take it off. And uh, well, let's pop this open and show you the mechanism. I've already removed the four screws. Yeah, these cars have screws in all four corners rather than uh, the later post-war that would have either one screw on each end or even later one screw and a tab. Uh, four screws, more labor intensive. So um, to pull the truck off, you just remove this horseshoe clip and the truck comes off and I was able to take a pair of pliers and straighten it back out. It was bent significantly. Replace the man. The mechanism worked fine. And the one other repair that I'm going to do here very shortly is uh, this car has a crack in the shell. You can see it right here. And back on the inside. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some reinforcement to this back side um, to, um, to just reinforce that to make it keep it from getting worse. So the first thing I did was you can see where someone had glued on there before. So I sanded all that down flat to make a flat surface. And then I'm going to use my favorite uh, inexpensive source of sheet styrene. And that is old credit cards and membership cards. It's, a, it's plastic, it's cheap, it's free because you have them in your collection. And uh, so I'm going to take this and a little dab of uh, some uh, super glue, put that on there with a clamp and let it dry, and that is going to reinforce the car. So um, let's go ahead and do that real quick. So I'm going to apply, oh, there it is, um, a little bit of uh, super glue to this thing. And just smidge down here, it doesn't take much. 
and we're going to slide that into place. I pre-cut it. There, you can see it now. It helps if I do this in front of the camera. And I'm going to just clamp that on the place just to make sure it has a good seal. So that aside to dry for a while. But meanwhile, let's take a look at the mechanism. The, uh, the little mousetrap type mechanism in here is simplicity at its best. There's very little that can go wrong. Um, yes, the little rubber man can fall off, but uh, he can be replaced and he just slides on the tab right there. Um, and so what you have is, let's lock it into place here. You pull it back by closing the boxcar door like this. A little nub on the um, boxcar door grabs this, pulls it back, and locks it into place. As you see, the uh, plunger um, pulls down and it's locked into place. So you've got the plunger there, you've got a spring here. So all that happens is when the magnet pulls down the plunger, the spring pushes the man to the door, and at the same time, this lever comes across opening the door. So, now you see him, now you don't. Peekaboo. Okay. So, this mechanism is pretty simple, uh, pretty inexpensive to make, and apparently it was quite successful because, this, in addition to the, uh, the two 3464 cars and the 34... Uh, 3472 that was available in 1952 and 1953. Uh, when Lionel switched to their bigger boxcars, the 6464 series, uh, in 1953, that was in response to uh, the nice scale cars that had come out from American models or Auburn models. Uh, by the way, that's the tooling that uh, Menards uses for their boxcars today. Anyway, those larger scale cars uh, really... Um, hurt Lionel in sales compared to these smaller boxcars. So Lionel made theirs bigger, still not to scale, but the 6464 series was um, closer to scale. And anyway, so using those same frames, they also continued making an operating car in the 3484 and 3494 series uh, for quite some time. And also, uh, the operating U.S. mail car was based on this, where... The man would have a, a magnet, a different shaped man, have a magnet, um, and you'd put a, uh, a mail bag with him, and when he would fly out, the mail bag would continue on, and he'd deliver the mail. Um, so, that's a uh, short description of our 3464 operating boxcars, Peekaboo ICU. Um, these aren't really expensive because they are everywhere. Um, you can see them on eBay, people asking a fortune for them, but honestly, um, those in running condition like this, I mean, there's, you know, some, it's not in perfect condition. We got a little blob there. Uh, the other one has a cracked shell. You know, these are $10 or less cars and, uh, even some in better condition, you're probably going to be able to find them at a show for, I mean, in really good condition, maybe $25 or less. Higher than that, they really need to be in mint condition with a box in order to be more expensive than that. But um, so it's a nice little 027 size box car, although uh, these came with O sets as well. And um, they're inexpensive and uh, it adds a little bit of unexpected action. Your visitors might not be expecting a man to pop out of the box car. Um, but uh, what does he do? Well, he just kind of stands there. Uh, you know, I don't know. What's his job description? I don't know. <laughs> so in any case, these are the 3464 cars. They're uh, easy to find, easy to repair. There's not much to them. And uh, add a little bit of action and excitement to your railroad. Um, and uh, like I said inexpensive, easy to work on. Uh, there's a lot to like about these cars and their larger companions. So, uh, you know, maybe check them out for your own layout and uh, hope you like the video. If you do, like it, share it, subscribe it, tell your friends, tell your neighbors. And until next time, keep those trains running.